Selwyn here from winstrength.com, bringing you the third day of the eighth week of the Dark Horse Training Program by Brian Osru. Like usual, I'll leave links below for Brian Osru's original video where he explains and details the program, as well as links to the LiftVault website where they've taken that information and uh, imported it into a free Google spreadsheet so you can do the program at home without having to worry about translating all that video information into spreadsheet information. So with that being said, we'll move on to the third day. Uh, third day, like usual, lower body day with an emphasis on deadlifts. So today's uh, movements were the, were the front squat as well as the deficit deadlift. If you remember my last week's video, I chose a front squat because it is one of my weak points. Therefore, I want to address that and bring in some more front squat exposure. Hopefully, we can improve that, activate more abs, activate more quads, and just become a better front squatter in general. Uh, one thing I did do this week was change the rep scheme that is found in the spreadsheet. So if you've watched the video, uh, Brian Elzer's original video, you can choose between uh, one rep, three reps, and five reps for the max effort work for the day. If you're feeling really good, try for that heavy single. If not, go for a three rep or a five rep max, and that way you can um, kind of temper that fatigue a little bit and still get in some good work without having to go all out Every single every single day. Uh, normally that has been fine for the from the previous parts of the program. I've just kind of gone along with whatever the spreadsheet has prescribed. I think it just goes sequentially down. But today I just wasn't feeling that great. Uh, whatever the case may be, probably some lack of sleep or some extra work stress, whatever it is. Uh, nevertheless, I didn't opt to do the heavy single that was prescribed for today. Uh, we did change that over to a heavy triple to see how that goes. Uh, what that does is it changes your volume work as well as the percentages used, as well as your assistance movement for the day. So instead of doing uh, five heavy front squats, we're doing eight heavy front squats. Um, that way you kind of temper that weight again to balance out that fact that you're doing three reps instead of a single. Uh, we also dropped down the last, we also dropped the number of working sets too from uh, six to five today keeping the trying to keep the work in a check I did drop that further down from five to four so we dropped out completely on the last set so uh, today's workout included front squats again reps of eight uh, we worked up to top set of 205 for eight I wrote this down wrong um, 205 for sets of eight and then for the deficit deadlifts uh, for a heavy trip, we worked up to 385 pounds for that final heavy triple. Um, for those, uh, we wrapped up that with some ab wheels on the knees as well as just some air jumps just to keep that blood flowing and to keep that uh, ab engagement going on. I think the ab wheels are kind of working up. Maybe by the end of the year, I'll be able to do a standing ab wheel roller. That would be kind of cool, one of my overarching goals for, the, for this year. Not a big goal, but a goal nonetheless. Uh, for those of you that are a little bit uh, confused about how the program is set up, uh, it is set up in a giant set format. So when I say I'm doing front squats, deficit deadlifts, ab wheels, and chumps, I'm doing those uh, sequentially. So think of it like a circuit training or like a CrossFit style workout where I do a set of front squats. Uh, I, I'll do, say, 155 pounds for eight, and then from that front squat, I'll move over to the deficit deadlift and then do 345 for a set of three, and then from there I'll move on to doing some ab wheel rollouts and then wrapping up with some jumps. Hopefully, ideally, there's minimal weight rest in between. Uh, obviously, getting from one equipment to the next is there, but I tend to drag it out a little bit just to get, catch my breath, but ideally you're moving bam, 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 bam in a giant set format. That way, it uh, benefits of this are it reduces time and it works on your conditioning as well simultaneously while doing this, so you don't really have to worry about extra conditioning because the program has conditioning built in. Uh, it does have its cons, obviously super brutal, very intense way of working out. Um, it condenses down the amount of work and the amount of time you're doing it. Uh, this does mean that you probably aren't lifting to your full potential if you had say five, 10 minute rests in between each movement. Um, even though you are working different muscle groups, you're still taxing the same cardiovascular system and energy systems. So even though I did uh, say, even if I did a bicep curl um, and I do a tricep extension, I'm still moving and I'm still working out. So to that degree of resources that the body has to execute strength, I'm still taking away some resources even though I didn't use the triceps for the bicep curl and vice versa. You're not going to be able to maximally 
lift as much weight or as much or do as many reps as you can if you only ever did bicep curls with like a five minute rest in between. We're really shortening down and condensing the, the workload we do in this fashion. So once you finish those four movements, you take a two minute break and then restart that over again. Now with weight selection, um, I didn't catch it in the video, I might have missed it, but I have opted to do a somewhat pyramid fashion of the weight selection for the main movement. So for the front squats, I like to keep it generally, I'll start off with what weight I used last week within that realm because if I, if I did a heavy five for the heavy triple, I should at least be able to do that for a five. What I did for a heavy five, I should at least be able to do for a heavy triple. So I'll start off with that weight and then pyramid my way up. Um, and the same thing goes for the squat, I'll pyramid my way up. My goal is to hit my maximum for the day with two more, with at least one set to go. So if we're doing five sets, by that fourth set, I'm ideally shooting for how heavy I can go for that day, and then I'll repeat that set once more for that final set. Um, I'm not sure if I'm meant to do five sets across with the same weight or pyramid up for that same weight. Sorry, pyramid up for all the reps. Uh, it's probably up to your interpretation as well as how you like to do some movements. But again, I think this is a lot nicer way to break temper the um, temper the stress that you're enduring going through this program. Um, if it is five by five at the same weight across, definitely that weight you're using will have to drop significantly. What, what weight you can do for a heavy set of five once is going to be different, obviously, to a heavy set of five that you have to repeat four more times. So with that in mind, I think the pyramid is a good way to do it. It helps temper that stress again, and it helps you actually push a little bit more heavier weights towards the end of the working sets there. Uh, and then from there, again, we move on to the volume set, which is again performed in that giant set format. All we're doing now is we're changing the rep scheme as well as the amount of weights that we're using. So uh, the accessory movement for the day, the front squat, similar weights uh, for similar reps, and then we move on to deficit deadlifts. Here is where that uh, one, three, or five reps play, play a role, because now because we did three reps, uh, we're gonna increase those reps to eight. If we did one rep, we're gonna increase that weight to five. If we did five reps, we're gonna increase that weight, that rep count to 10. Um, and it also influences the uh, percentages. That's why the spreadsheet is quite helpful. It does this automatically. When I change the rep count from one, three, or five, it automatically does the formula into that volume work. So I just plug in the weight and away we go. But so we did three reps. Um, now we drop down the weight from 385 to 315 pounds and we do that for sets of eight. Across the first rep is always an AMRAP, so do as many as you can. Uh, sometimes I always at least want to hit obviously that minimum eight, ideally shooting for two. I've noticed uh, over the course of the program if I can hit two, that was probably a good uh, weight count for the max effort. If I can do more than that, like 12, if I can overshoot the rep, the AMRAP by four, I probably pick too light of a weight to use. Uh, but that's my own personal experience with the program. But again, do that, and then again, we're adding in those abs and conditioning in that giant set format. Wait two minutes and then repeat those movements in that order again, and then do that again for three sets total. Uh, because of my conditioning or time limit or resting, my workouts blow out a little bit from that hour 15 mark to probably an hour 30, hour 45 if I do complete all the movements. So I have a tendency, especially in the last half of this program, to cut off uh, sets and exercises. So for this volume set, uh, first set we went all the way through. Second set I only did the front squat and the deficit deadlift, cut out the abs and conditioning, and I completely cut out that third set there in order to make it through this workout within that hour 15 mark. From there we move on to our dynamic effort section for the day. Uh, this is just a single movement but uh, set up in 10 minute EMOM, so every minute on the minute do three reps of dynamic effort. So today was squats, uh, 245 with some bands. Again, this is the same weight that I used in previous weeks. I only got halfway through, so I only did five sets total. And again, I'm not increasing the weight too much because I'm noticing my technique and speed are really breaking down. I think we're hitting that, that point where I'm not able to advance as quickly as I would. So we're kind of hitting that plateau, especially with that dynamic effort um, format of this program without being able to elongate the rest periods. The weights aren't going up without my technique and speed breaking down to some degree. 
Um, so with that being said, that wraps up today. I hope that explains a little bit more of the program and how to actually conduct the program in a more logical fashion. Like usual, I'll leave a playlist uh, right here so you can catch up on my previous episodes of my training vlog as well as see the final overall rating and review of the Dark Horse training program. This has been someone from Win Strength, and remember, a better life through strength.